Hey what's up everyone and welcome to Daily Code Buffer. In this video we are going to learn about the state design pattern. So state design pattern is a part of a behavioral design pattern which will allow us to do some behaviors based on the state. It is basically how we define the state machines. So let me give you more example what does state machine means and when we will be using this state design pattern. So this type of state management we will be doing a lot in our applications as well where we will be doing different kinds of behavior based on the different state of the object itself okay so suppose if i take the example that based on the state one okay state one you should be doing some different behavior that is behavior one for state two you should be doing different behavior okay and so on so on okay this type of things we generally do in our application and this type of things when we have finite states what we do is generally we end up using the if else conditions and based on those if else condition we do all those behaviors like if state one do this behavior if it's state two do this behavior and so on but if you have many states within your application though it has to be finite states doing this kind of if else conditions is not good right and whenever you want to change some behaviors based on the different states as well it is a better practice to use some design pattern and accordingly change the behavior of your application based on the state it has been passed okay so that's the idea where we'll be using the state design pattern and this has been used everywhere so what we do is let's take one more example of a document okay so suppose i'm creating a document and when the document state is new right that means it will have a different behavior so whenever the document is new it has to be written right this document has to be written it has to be saved okay and then once this behavior is done it moves to the next state of your object so once this is done it will move to the next state that's that's to be in the draft state like this particular document has been drafted now once this document has been drafted it has a different sets of behavior okay now once it is draft you do not have to write it again or anything it may be also that we have to revisit but let's consider that once once it is draft it is going to a review state okay it has to be reviewed all those things and then once it is done it can go to the complete state and once it is complete it can be shared along and something so there are different behaviors along with the different states generally what we will do is how we will implement this design pattern is we will have a state okay we will have a state as an interface okay and this state will have any action to do any action to perform okay based on any state we have based on any state we have we will do some action that is a behavior we will do for that state okay that's one interface now this interface can be implemented by multiple states state one state two state three and so on and for each and every states there will be a different action to be performed okay so now you can see that you have different states defined and for all those states you have actions also defined now with all the states you will also have a context okay now this context will be passed along with every state to identify what is the actual state of the object or what we have to do okay so this context will store the state of the application or the object whatever we want to do and based on this context it will determine what state it is and what action needs to be performed okay always so state will identify what is the state and what actions needs to be done based on the context that we provide okay we will be uh, going through the code as well so we'll get more understanding but this is the overall idea where we will define a state interface and for that state interface we will have the different concrete classes and we have a context class as well which will store the state of the object or the application okay so enough jibber jabber let's go to the code and let's understand this example i have taken this example from tutorials point and refactoring guru i have given the references as well you can go through this links and you can learn more about this design pattern okay now let's start with the state here okay here you can see simply have defined a state interface and this state interface has one method that is do action and this action will be performed based on the context this context will store the state okay this is what we defined here as well okay now with this state as we define that the state have will have multiple concrete classes as well so let's go to the concrete class this is a state state and this start state is implementing state interface and this is a do action this do action is taking the context here and you can see that it is setting the context here okay and it is doing some action two things and we have a string method to return the state as well 
similar thing we have the stop state as well which is doing the same thing it has the context it is doing some behavior and it is hitting the state okay and we have a context as well so you can see that as we defined context will store the state so here it has a state here and whenever the context is created the state will be null and we have a set state and get set method as well to get and set the states now how we will run the application so if you come here you can see that we created a context okay and we call the state as well here okay this is a state created and we call the do action method on that particular state and we pass on the context so whenever the actions will perform after that the state of the context will be set as start state and after that we check the state of the application and then we call the another state so we change the state and we perform the action so that action will be performed and the state will be changed okay so if you run this application we can see that this is our result where player one is in start state okay so if you come here this particular start state will be called and within this two action you can see that player is in start state okay once this is done we will print the state so the state is start state okay after that we call this do action for the stop state so player is in stop state and after that we call the state as well so you can see that whenever we are calling this do action we are performing the action and we are changing the state based on the context provided so you can see that we are not doing any if else conditions now based on the state we have the actions defined within the do action method so you just pass the context what state it is and it will perform the actions you will use this when you have finite set of status and for that status you have different behaviors to be performed okay so this was state design pattern in a nutshell i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any doubts regarding any of the things that we have covered then do let me know in the comment section below it takes a lot of time for creating such videos and for you it just takes one second to click on that subscribe button it gives a lot of motivation for me to create such videos for you so don't wait click the subscribe button below i will see you in the next video till then happy coding bye bye